we are again, another week down in our isolation. And it's all getting a little bit real, isn't it? It's really become the way we live our lives. Not only has this thrown up challenges both financially and also mentally for us all, because we have never, ever been through this stuff before. We've never done it before. For those who have kids, oh my goodness, they've had an even bigger challenge, and that's homeschooling. Now, I've got to hold my hand up and claim complete ignorance. I don't have kids, and I've got a new puppy, and I've found that difficult enough. I, I just can't genuinely imagine that on top of also maybe working from home, having kids to homeschool must be just so incredibly time consuming and would cause a bit of anxiety, I imagine. And I think people are learning, educating kids is one of the most important but probably hardest jobs in the world. So I bow down to all the teachers too, <laughs> all parents and teachers. So listen up, we've got a couple of experts who can help us here in terms of sharing their knowledge of how to make this job easier for everybody and how they're coping. I've got Michelle Lucas, who's a primary school teacher and also leading educator, fabulous comedian, Cal Wilson, and our regular psychologist, Franco Greco. Welcome, everyone. Hi. Hi. Okay. Now, Cal, I'll start with you. You're homeschooling at the moment with your little one. What's the situation been like at home for you? What does it look well, like? I think we're pretty fortunate in that my son is 10. He loves uh, learning on a device and his dad used to be a primary school teacher. So we're fairly well equipped. I, I you know, I have friends that have uh, five, six and seven year olds at home and I know that that is a lot more wine worthy than what we're having. The thing I've found is um, I still don't like maths. I'm, I don't like cutting things out with scissors and origami is very stressful. That's what I've discovered. But we're actually in a pretty good position um, he enjoys school. He's loving getting his cats on the class Zoom every morning. He tries to get at least one cat in while we're while the role is being called. So I think I'm actually I'm actually getting off pretty pretty easily. I saw this morning on your Facebook that you made a colour wheel out of quite a few of his toys and clothes and shoes and that sort of thing in a way to get him to understand how colour moves around that wheel. Do you think it's all about? Um, adapting and not putting too much pressure on yourself as a parent and doing things that you both enjoy together yeah I mean it was a lovely idea that his art teacher had to do the color wheel and it was really fun assembling all of the bits and pieces it was less fun putting them away there was a bit of complaining um, but it was a really lovely uh, practical illustration of like the way that colors all fit together and we're really conscious of not putting pressure on him He's, you know, he can come to both of us because my husband works from home and always has since he left teaching. Um, he's got two parents as a resource and his teacher is really great. Like she's so, you know, she's on chat all day for him to ask questions and things like that. And we're all just conscious that everyone's going through this. So uh, it, it's not, if, if your kid is behind, everybody's behind. So, so they're not behind. That's kind of the way I'm looking at it is that we're all going through this together. So it's not like, our household is the only one that hasn't quite got the fraction wall sorted out. Yeah, absolutely. Be kind to yourself. That's, that's mm. the main thing. And don't put too much pressure on yourself. Michelle, as a teacher and an educator, how has your life changed over the last couple of months? Oh, our life has changed dramatically. Um, adapting our in-class lessons where we've got all our materials and we can guide and explain and model the, the content to the kids just that supportive nature of being one-on-one, -on -one, being able to pull your small groups and things like that. Um, it's been really tricky, but I think teachers are really working hard to make their lessons suitable for the home environment. Um, getting your kids just, you know, to read, bring grandma and read, that's practicing their fluency. You know, do a cooking class, there's their maths. So there's so many things that parents can do away from the curriculum um, to support their children's learning. Do you think people are getting a newfound respect for teachers and seeing the amount of work and the amount of pressure that teaching children can hold? Yes, definitely. We've had a lot of parents um, actually say, hey, I just didn't realise how hard this is. Um, I don't know how you cope with them all day. So it has been, um, it has been, thing. and as I've said to lots of people, um, lots of people think because they've been to school, they can be a teacher. But, you know, I go to the doctors and don't think I can be a doctor. So there's all that developmental things that we understand as teachers that we work towards and support and scaffold their learning. So, yeah, it's a great job and I wouldn't change it, but I'd much rather be back in the classroom. <laughs> Is that right? Is that the general consensus oh. with teachers that yeah. they really want to be with the kids and interacting yeah. with them? Definitely. It's so um, 
I didn't take an office job. So just to be in front of the screen all day and to handle 27 little faces on a screen, trying them not to all talk at once, things like that. It's, um, it's tricky and they miss us too. Uh, that I think they really do. I've got one little boy who was just like, I can't wait till we don't have to be at school, Mrs. Lucas. And then now he's like, I just can't wait to get back. Mum put me in detention the first day. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do that, Cal. <laughs> we haven't had to do that yet, but I totally, yeah. I totally agree with you. I think um, parents are realising how amazing teachers are. My mum was a primary school teacher. My niece is a primary school teacher. I married a primary school teacher. So I feel like, yeah, the world is catching up. Like. Yeah. The, and there's a meme going around on Facebook at the moment, which is um, something about parents are finally discovering that maybe it wasn't the teacher that was the problem. Mm. And I think that's really, <laughs> that, that is happening in a lot of households. <laughs> uh, Franco, in terms of how this affects our mental health, both the kids and the teachers, what are some of the upsides that you've been seeing from remote learning? Well, I think the, the commentary people are making so far is that people have been able to uh, connect in ways that they haven't been able to. So seeing their children in, in, in a school in the environment, even though it's online, are connecting with their learning. Um, I think teachers uh, themselves, so, uh, maybe Michelle, you might make a point of this, you know, collaborating in ways that they haven't really collaborated in the past, perhaps um, engaging with, um, with parents uh, more, more effectively through the online process as well. I think that that's a real positive that's come out of this. Uh, I guess also from another point of view is a system like the Victorian government, for example, rolled out a whole range of uh, assistance to, to parents, uh, schools, um, you know, um, there's families have now got laptops they can utilise, uh, technology they can utilise more effectively and communicate to the schools more effectively. So I think there's a whole range of ways in which this is, which is a, a positive that come out of it. Yeah, but there are downsides to remote learning, particularly for kids yeah. who they come from lower socioeconomic backgrounds mm. or they don't have access to the internet. They might be in a, a rural mm. area where they can't get all this information. How does that affect those kids and, and, and how... I'll get to you about that too, Michelle, how, how mm. the education system is catering for the kids. But, but those kids, where do they fall on this spectrum? Mm. With what we're seeing in terms of Beyond Blue and, um, uh, and helplines, there's been a lot of increase in, in um, uh, calls, uh, particularly uh, older students, like senior students that really are worried about exams, worried about year 12 um, and how they're going to complete that. So. So there's been and, and there's been a doubling of escalations associated with with those calls. Um, so so there is a mental health component to that that really people need to consider. Uh, people are students are connected to their usual routines, the usual support groups at school, um, and that's going to compound this issue about being isolated. Um, so we've got to be really careful of that and be conscious of that. And I think parents are and teachers at schools are are really sort of really becoming more aware of, of those students that are at risk. Michelle, how are uh, how is homeschool catering for these kids? How is how are, how are you teachers trying to not let them fall under the um, under the cracks or through the cracks? Well, uh, we have a great support staff, so our support staff are, are really important in this area. Making contact with those kids, whether it be through a device or whether it be a simple phone call, to support the family and to support the children, um, providing, you know, rather than everything online, providing a pack for those children with some, you know, clear, simple instructions of things to complete that the parents can help out with. And the thing is, if they don't get to do it, you know, really the mental health side of this is just as important as the academics. And parents take their children away for holidays or out of school for various reasons, and it's okay. You know, we get through it. Next term, we'll all, hopefully, we'll all be back on track and we'll catch up the academics, you know, keep your children safe, healthy and well. And in terms of monitoring those kids that might be falling through the cracks, um, can you tell that that's happening even through a classroom if they're not turning up or how, how, how do you deal with that? Well, it's a little bit hard. We're, I work at a school lucky that I'm in a fairly high socioeconomic economic area, um, but we still have children without internet or without um, you know, devices. So, you know, as a school and as the government has, they've provided, it's been fantastic that we've been able to give the opportunity for these parents and families to have devices to work from home from. Um, it's a little bit hard. We, we don't want to overload parents either. You know, we understand that there's challenges. So a phone call from me every day saying, 
you know, little Johnny hasn't done his work, that's not going to help. A phone call from me once a week to say how things are going, is there something I can do to support you? Do you need some extra help? Can I do something here? Is a much better way to approach that. You know, I think that's just the, the key to keep the communication open. Yeah. Michelle, you sound like a fabulous teacher and I think this is something we're all recognising too, is how much teachers care for their students. It's not just like you roll up and, and throw them through the door and, and it's just sit down, get this stuff done. You guys really care about the kids. Oh, yeah, we definitely really care about the kids and I think, you know, it's not that 9 to 3.30 with the wonderful holidays that everyone thinks it is. You know, most of those holidays we're planning, worrying about that child, all those type of things. So, yeah, we do have a really good... and. I think most teachers, that beginning start of the year is all about building those relationships, finding out their interests so we can use their passions in what we're teaching them. Yeah. Cal, how does it, do you think, affect the kids in terms of social interaction? Like your little one, he hasn't probably seen his mates for a long time now. Yeah, yeah. What's the impact of that in terms of your home life and, and how he feels on a day-to-day -day basis? Like a friend of mine's kid, she got really upset the other day because she realised she can't just talk to her friends about how to write something or stories that they have to tell or an essay they have to write. And it, that was really upsetting for her because the realisation was that this is going to happen for a long time and she just missed her friends. Yeah, well, he, he is really missing his friends. We're really um, fortunate in that like we've got access to the internet and um, he has an Xbox and so we've set him up with a couple of his friends they can play Xbox together after school, but also um, he's really into basketball. He's in two basketball teams and um, my husband coaches him in one of those teams. And so he's got them all set up on an app um, that they can do drills at home, and but kind of they can all see it in a private group. So they can sort of compete against each other, even though they're not together. And I know they're really enjoying that. And we're lucky enough to have a basketball hoop in the back garden. So he's getting, he, he's getting that kind of um, social aspect there we set him up on a couple of like messenger apps that are specifically for children um and so he's, he's messaging with his friends a bit but he's only obviously allowed to do that at lunch times and after school um and he's also on a wee group with his relatives in new zealand so he's been spamming my parents with you know videos of him with a cat filter on and stuff so it, it's kind of he's enjoying the knowledge of it and uh connecting with his relatives in a way that he hasn't done as much before, like it's always been hi on FaceTime and then going off, but now he's got sort of something fun and playful to do. So the technology aspect of things has really been helping him, but he definitely, you know, misses going for a bike ride with his mates or kicking the footy in the street or, yeah, it's, it's definitely hard. His birthday is in uh, the next couple of weeks and we're kind of contemplating what that's gonna look like. You know, like whether we do a big Zoom call of friends and relatives or how we can make that day special for him when he can't have a party or hang out with his mates. Yeah, well, good luck with that. Zoom parties are pretty hot right now with the little ones. Yeah. So, so that sounds like a pretty good option. Franco, let's talk about the parents and your one as well. And you've been doing homeschooling too. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot to do, work from home, and it's a lot to then have to educate your kids as well and be around them 24-7. Mm. How... Do you recommend people survive without lo losing losing it? You know, it's it's a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. Well, I think it's about really understanding that the the home environment is also a learning environment. So your kids are learning as well, right? Um, yes, they are. They they're not at school, but they're also learning from online. So and they're not, as Michelle sort of said, they're not going to be falling behind. Um, so it's having a bit of perspective on it and not having too much ambition about they've got to achieve this and they're going to achieve that, you know? So in a way, just sort of scaling down the, the, the uh, ambition and the aspirations for what they can achieve and recognize that this is a period of time, it's a very short period of time. And, um, and just really sort of making sure that they're connecting with their schools in a way that, uh, that allows them to sort of still do the work that they can do, but let the teachers actually teach as well when the best they can. So they're not there to replace the teachers. Uh, also about recognizing that to have a bit of self-compassion, I think sometimes parents can be really hard on themselves and they say, well, am I doing enough? And I'm just thinking about the apps that I'm on at the moment. We have parent apps and, you know, some parents doing some amazing things. And I feel sometimes, oh, hang on, am I actually doing as well as they are? Am I doing, should I be doing all this stuff? Should I be sort of downloading all this material and recognizing that, hang on, I'm stressing myself out here. 
Um, so recognizing actually, I don't need to be doing that all the time. Actually, probably not doing that at all. Recognizing that teachers are providing daily information about what students need to be doing and actually having a bit of self-compassion about yourself as well. Actually, you know, I'm actually doing okay. Yeah. That's probably the best advice I reckon. You can only do what you can do. Um, and that's probably the best thing to say to yourself, I think, in <laughs> situation. How important though is it for the kids to see how their parents respond and how should their parents be responding to things like, um, you know, if they're feeling frustration or even anger when they're trying to communicate with their kids and teach their kids? How important is it that they see their parents respond in a certain way? Well, you know, uh, as uh, probably parents will recognise, and Michelle probably recognises as a teacher, uh, students, uh, kids will take on and model their parents and, and really are watchful of what their parents are doing. Um, again, it's about recognising that actually you're going to have emotions and you're going to have feelings and you're going to express them. Be, be, be more mindful of the fact that actually this is a very stressful moment. And so one, recognising that it's, that's likely can, can happen. And when it does happen, actually explain to your children, actually, I'm sorry that I'm experiencing this. I'm sorry that I'm expressing anger to you and being frustrated is all a bit difficult. So it really is about modeling that type of behavior, but also recognizing that um, uh, your children also need to uh, express their own anxieties as well. Um, so checking in with them as well and just asking them, how are you going? You know, how, how are you feeling about this? Um, so that's probably the bits that I reckon the parents probably need to recognise. One, actually watch what, how they interact with their children as well, but giving themselves time out as well as part of that daily, day, daily grind of actually doing their own work as well as managing a child that's trying to connect with their schools. Yeah. Michelle, um, you're a primary school teacher. How have you seen the kids respond to all of these changes? Have they been amazing? Have they, have, they have, yeah. Yes, definitely. They have, the families and our children have been amazing because it's new for them. Um, you know, they don't have the social contact with the friends. They don't have that small, you know, we do video conferencing in small groups, but it's not the same as showing, sharing, you know, all the things that we do in the classroom. Um, I know their parents are great at sort of setting up some little video chats. So they're trying to get the social interaction that way. But it is, yeah, it is tricky for the kids, but that, you know, we're so proud of them. We're so proud of how they've adapted and um, yeah, they're going really well. All right, big question. Victoria looks like it's going to keep their schools closed for a little bit longer for, for all the right reasons, it seems to me. Um, how does that make you all feel? Aside from the politics of whether or not you think should, school should be closed or open, how does that idea make you feel? I'll start with you, Cal. Um, I'm, I'm really happy about it. I think it is exactly the right thing to do. Um, and we, because we're going okay, like I'm actually really loving having this time at home with him because I travel so much for work usually in the old world. That's what I did. Um, so it's actually been really precious to have the time at home with him. And I've been um, really proud of the stuff that he's, he's done for school. Like I'm seeing a lot more of it than I would normally. Um, and yeah, I feel like we've got quite a good little unit. So I'm really fortunate in that I'm, I'm actually enjoying having the closeness with my family although I think we are watching too much Survivor that is the only thing <laughs> good to know <laughs> I like that that's it it's look it's that's a tool an educational tool I think <laughs> I love it what about you Michelle how do you feel about that I imagine you're pretty excited to get back in there oh yeah look I agree that we need to keep our schools closed I'm you know there's no argument against that but you know I'm, I'm busting to get back in the classroom yeah, yeah. Uh, where we want to be it's, we you know we don't want to be in front of the computer all day we want to be interacting and with our kids so um, as much as I agree with everything and I do believe that we need to stay home term too but you know realistically I'd love to be back there tomorrow morning or maybe Monday morning. <laughs> Franco what about you? Look, you know, I think it's getting sort of you get, you're adapting to this new environment so I think actually for me it's uh, it was better this week than last week and uh, and I think maybe next week will be better so um, so in a way, actually, I, quite, I sort of quite like it. This is it's a different way of inter interacting and capacity to see what your kids are doing. And um, anyway, I, I quite enjoy the moment, but I can see that, you know, the benefits really are to go back to school at some point. Um, Michelle, do you think this experience of lockdown and homeschooling will transform education in the future? Do you think some things that we've learned from this experience will be implemented through schooling in the future? Well, look, I think all this, um, any sort of change in education, um, and it's particularly such a world event, I think that will make an effect in uh, how we teach in the future. Um, you know, there is some students that this might be a better platform for them 
some of our children with disabilities and things like that might find this a more comforting um, and learning environment than being in the school with a with a whole group of people all the time. So I think you know we'll we'll learn from this. We'll reflect on when it's over and you know what the positives were, what the challenges were, and how we can then look to make education better for our kids. Yeah, uh, Cal. For you, uh, what are you most looking forward to though when your kid goes back to school? <laughs> I'm most looking forward to not having to um, come up with pancakes for lunch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, really it's a whole new level. Are you still doing like lunch boxes as well, or are you just? It's... Look, we started off doing that, and now we're just back to me sticking my head out the door onto the veranda, going, "What? What do you feel like for lunch?" And it's always pancakes, and <laughs> it's very hard to say no. I'm really looking forward to him seeing his friends again. And I'm also looking forward to standing in a school playground and just watching uh, parents flock around the teachers going, thank you, thank you, thank you. We had no idea. Oh, we had no idea. Thank you so much. Well, I reckon that's a general consensus. We bow down to our educators who are doing an amazing job and also to all the parents who are doing an amazing job as well. Like I said, it's, it's a whole new world that we've never dealt with before. So it's so great to be able to talk these things through with people and share your experiences and your knowledge as well and to help look after yourself in this whole process. So I thank you all. It's just been absolutely delightful. It's been lovely to see some new faces. <laughs> I know. It's the highlight of my week. So thank you so much, you three.